We now will go ahead and show isolation if a non-trade fluoride is given. Um, for a non-tray fluoride, we would be using a cup with the fluoride in and an applicator. The isolation technique for this can be using dry angles on the buckle. And uh, with the dry angle, we would dry the area. We would position the dry angle with the raised side toward the tissue up near Stenson's duct. And the wide part of the triangle comes toward the anterior. For this procedure, the client will hold the saliva ejector, um, in this case, toward the right side. I'm not going to try it, turn it on. The tissue area would be dried. Could you close just a little bit, please, Mrs. O'Meara? Thank you. Cotton rolls can be used to help isolate the buckle areas. Are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. The fingers are positioned so that the non-dominant hand is used. If you are a right-handed operator, you are standing at 11 o'clock. If you are left-handed, you will stay at 1. The client will lift their chin up, turn toward me, and my index finger will be uh, retracting the tissue on the buccal mucosa, and my index and my middle finger is preventing the tongue from coming up and wetting the teeth. The teeth are then dried with compressed air in a zigzag motion, occlusal to buccal to lingual, and then the fluoride would be painted onto the teeth with an applicator continuously for the recommended time, which be, would be continuously if using a, um, the um, neutral sodium fluoride or would be applied continuously for one minute using the uh, acidulated phosphate fluoride. When we go to the other quadrant, we would again dry the area, place the cotton rolls on the buckle, we need to have you close just a little please. place two cotton rolls side by side on the buckle. I lift the lip and try to get the cotton roll underneath the muscle area. When we retract, again, I'm going to use my non-dominant hand, have my middle finger in on the left quadrant, on the buckle, my index finger in the lingual to prevent the tongue from the lingual surfaces of the teeth. The fluoride will be continuously applied. Afterward, we would remove the cotton rolls. On the mandibular arch for the left side, we would dry before applying the cotton rolls. The cotton rolls would be along the buckle. We'll have you close just a little, please. 
and on the lingual we will be positioning um, stacked cotton rolls. We'll have you raise your tongue, please. The clinician will hold the cotton rolls to keep the area isolated. The teeth will be in a zigzag motion, crucial to buckle to lingual, and the fluoride continuously applied for the recommended amount of time. We will remove the cotton rolls. To remove the dry angles, we will need to wet them to prevent pulling on the buccal mucosa. I'm going to put a little water in your mouth, Mrs. O'Meara, and that will help us remove those pads. squares to dry and remove any excess fluoride. Um, when she is finished using the saliva ejector, water will be run through the hose again. Are you finished with the saliva ejector? Are you finished with the yes. saliva ejector? and the tissue will be examined for any irritation. How does your tissue feel, Mrs. O'Meara? Fine. If she would have an irritation area of burning or tingling, what could be done is we would wet the gauze square and we would just wipe and blot the area with the gauze. Remain with the client until that burning or tingling is, has subsided. Once the fluoride treatment is completed, documentation must occur. Under the progress notes, it should be documented how the patient tolerated the fluoride treatment under the A for assessment. Under the T for treatment, you should indicate the type of fluoride, the flavor, the size of the tray, whole mouth, or whether it was a fluoride varnish. 